Hello. My name is Aristus Chardes Woodard. I'm 30 years old. <clears throat> I really don't know how to start this video or how to really, you know, approach this video because I don't post a lot of serious like type videos like this, but I think it needs to be uh, addressed and brought to uh, the world's attention as well as California's attention as well. <clears throat> On June 12th, um, 2018, I was pulled over um, in a carpool area of San Francisco. I've only been here for about approximately four months, um, driven here and there uh, throughout the city. So I don't really know more or less um, that many um, places like far as to get onto the Bay Bridge. Um, so my boss um, instructed me to go a certain way. So I went there all the time. Um, cops pulled over uh, me and uh, some more individuals um, to talk to us. <clears throat> I asked them, I said, hey man, um, what's going on, what's going on? Um, they're like, hey, just pull over here, just pull over here. So I pull over um, and uh, I'm just like, man, what's going on, what's, what's the deal? Uh, we'll get to that. I'm like, okay, I'm like, I need to know what's going on, just tell me what's going on. We're giving you a ticket. I'm like, okay, for, for what? Um, carpool validation. I'm like, okay, well, I just got here from like Houston. I just need to know like where to go. That way I can, you know, whatever it needs to be. I just need to know what's going on for next time. So I don't get an actual ticket again or whatever it needs to be done. The officer at that point begins to be a little bit more aggressive with me um, and asking for my ID. At this time, I started to feel that this officer is just not gonna be um, friendly. So our phone call came in. Um, at this time, like the officer was not being friendly um, at all. Um, I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with the situation. I said, I, I, I need to talk to another officer. Can you please get the other officer that's right there? Can you get him for me? Uh, he keeps, he keeps asking me for my ID. Let me see your ID. I said, can I see another officer? Can I see another officer? Can I see another officer? Can I see your ID? Um, at this point, the officer states 148, uh, 148, 148. I'm like, what the fuck? What, 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 what's 148? What, what 148 mean? Uh, he doesn't say anything. The other officer comes over. Uh, at this time, he's like, like, what the hell is going on? What's going on? Why are you guys saying 148? What's going on? What does that mean? What does that mean? Officer down, what the fuck does that mean? Like, you guys going to do this today? You guys going to seriously do this today? What the hell does 148 mean? The officer, uh, Mr. Scott, um, uh, approaches the car at that time, while Mr. Khan of uh, San Francisco Police Department, um, motorcycle police, uh, at that point, is way more aggressive with me. Uh, Mr. Scott, at this time, tells me, I'm taking you with me. I'm like, why are you taking me in? He says, for whatever he said to the officer. At this time, he tells me to turn off my car. I turn off my vehicle. And my windows are rolled down at this point. All, both windows are rolled down on my car. Then at this point, you have Mr. Khan pull out his, his gun on me. Pull his gun out by his waistband. And tells, and tells me to get out the car. I'm telling the other officer, Mr. Scott, are you serious? This guy has a gun on me. You gonna let this guy pull a gun on me? At this time, Mr. Khan is at my actual mirror, my pat, my driver's side mirror, and Mr. Scott is right there by my door handle on my driver's side. He tells me to drive my car, drive the car to drive my keys, to drive my keys. At this point, I roll up my window. Mr. Khan circles behind Mr. Scott on a passenger on, on my driver's side door and has his gun pointed at me, like point blank. I open the door, Mr. Scott shoves this, the officer back a little bit. And at this point, this is what I've been asking for, was for a different officer, because I felt that this officer would do something that would be unjustice and try to like kill me. You know, uh, this is not the first time I've ever had a cop pull a gun on me or, you know, pointed it at me. But for this time, you know, and never being in a situation like this for about over 10 years now, and being a man and having a family, um, this, 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 this stuck with me, it hurt me. Um, they proceeded to take me out of the vehicle, put me in handcuffs. I haven't had handcuffs on me for 10 years. 10 years, 
I haven't had no handcuffs on me. And then what happens after that is it's all but a nightmare. At that point, I'm standing up, I get hazy, I just faint. The two officers start to say, oh, here he goes again, here, here, here it is, here it is. Like I'm just some fucking animal, like I'm some damn dog on the street. They put me against the wall. And I'm telling Mr. Scott, I said, this is ridiculous, man. Like, all I asked for was a different officer and I'm in handcuffs now. Well, you know, you got a little bit belligerent. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? I asked for another officer. When I was in Houston and, and been in trouble before in Houston or whatever it may be in Houston, I've asked for a different officer and Houston has provided me with an a officer, whether it took an hour, hour and a half for me to explain my situation to the officer. I will willingly accept the ticket at that point. But if I'm asking for a different officer, when I know that this officer might do something to me that may hurt me, kill me, like, it's their duty, especially what's going on in the world, to provide that for the citizen. Um, he tells me, well, you know you're on camera. I said, you're also going to know on camera that I actually said that this officer pulled a gun on me, that I asked six or seven times, please, can you give me another officer? Why are you being so, dis why are you being so like, disrespectful to me? All this. You're also going to see me tell you that you're saying to me, Mr. Scott, that you're 25 years tenure and that your other officer, Mr. Khan, um, that you had to calm him down because you had to shove him back when he pulled the gun on me. They proceed to throw me in jail, okay, on three charges. A felony, threat to an executive officer, a misdemeanor driving without a license, while I do have a Texas driver's license, valid, and then an infraction. While I'm in jail, the officers tell me, hey, you know, this is, you, you, you got a bond, um, it's $43,000. Now, I don't got no fucking $43,000 for anybody. So now they have railroaded me into jail, here and out, unknown environment, three months in. The officer says, hey, look, you don't have to actually bond out because this stuff gets like dropped anyway. This is like normal. Verbatim, in the jail cell, verbatim. You know, just wait until the morning, the OR you, whatever that means. And then at that point, you can stay overnight. You just gotta wait the process out. I'm like, this is ridiculous for nothing. I didn't do shit. I'm gonna sit in jail for nothing. At this time, it's like around seven o'clock. I'm supposed to be home at five, five thirty. Okay. I'm panicking because like my wife's seen all the stuff that's on the news. People getting shot, killed in the streets, like everything. My brethren, shot, killed in the streets. My sisters, shot, killed in the streets. And all I could think of is that she's gonna freak out. She here alone, her parents ain't here. They're all the way in Germany. My parents ain't here, they're in Houston. We don't got nobody here besides me and her and our dog. I ask them for calls. They're like, well, you gotta wait, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. All for them to tell me that, you know, this is normal. This is what San Francisco does. This is San Francisco. To me, that's the most downright disrespectful thing that I've ever had to deal with in my entire life. While I'm in jail, I got sick while I was in jail. Fever. Like 105 fever coming out of jail. Didn't have to walk here, walk there, walk here to talk to certain people, start to talk to certain people here, and talk to certain people there. My vehicle gets towed for $835. And all they can continue to keep telling me is that this is San Francisco, this is what they do. The officers and the people of the courts. They released me the following day, barely 24 hours in jail, okay? Sick to tell me that my charges have been dropped. Dismissed. I was like, okay. Dropped and dismissed. 835 hours later, my Beats headphones inside of my vehicle 
stolen by probably the tow driver. And then after that, you drop my charges. It's like, if I was wrong, why wouldn't they stick? It's dirty. Then after I get my car and pay the money I get to get my car out, the following day I'm supposed to call just to get the information that it's like confirmed. I get it, it says it's missed. So I go to 850 Bryan Street, which is one of like their city hall places here to get the paperwork. They tell me in there that my charge has been displaced for further information needed. So first you tell me it's dismissed. Now you're telling me it's displaced slash discharged or whatever they actually say it is for further information. I proceed to ask the DA's office if a police report is put in, can it be altered in any type of way? They say no. I go to another area. Another area. They say, well, they can doctor and put extra information in there. Well, when I asked you, you said to me that it can't be compromised. You said no. To me, you've compromised this whole investigation in this whole situation because I have vocally said on your cameras and audio, if they were on, what you guys proceeded to do to me. And I vocalized inside the jail cell what you guys proceeded to do to me. The officers inside the jail cell also said, this is like crazy. What police force was it? What police force was it? When they ask you that, they know. They're like, oh man, <laughs> this probably was them again. That's sad and sickening to me. I'm 30 years old. I've gotten past the, the part of 21, still alive, not killed by an officer. 25, not killed by an officer. It's even sad to even say that as a black man that I have to actually say these type of things. Like I'm not safe out here no more, man. I'm not safe at all. My friends ain't safe. People of color ain't safe. We ain't safe. So I'm asking for help. I don't never ask for help. If anyone really know me, I'll stay in this to the end by myself. I'm asking for all these celebrities that's talking that they want to help on this situation. I have a plan, a real, true, legitimate plan, but I need assistance. I don't need no money. I don't need none of that shit. All I need is the mouthpiece, communication. That's all I need. I have a plan in place to stop all of this, but I need people's mouthpiece. If you guys have friends that are black, friends that are minorities, Hispanic, whatever it is, it's time to speak up. Cause like, honestly, I could have been one of those hashtags. And honestly, I won't be a hashtag. I won't have you guys put me as a hashtag A1 or hashtag Aristus, hashtag AC. I'm not gonna let y'all do that to me, man. We deserve better out here in these streets and in this life. So I'm asking you all to please share this video if you care about any of the friends that you, that you guys have that are minorities. If you care, please share this video. I'll be posting this video everywhere. This video is to spread the awareness of what happened to me, to address the San Francisco Police Department, and also the city of San Francisco. Please guys, this is my plea for you guys. I love every one of you guys and the people that hate me, if you do, hey, I love y'all. I've survived 30 years and I plan on surviving more to have some kids here. So please, hear my cry.